going on, Jesbo TV? This is that Mr. Hayward checking in. I know we've been gone for a little while, but we're finally back. Contact Content is being pushed out, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Today, we're gonna do a ball video on resurfacing uh, the differences on how I resurface my bowling balls that come with a compound or a polish on them and those that are dull. Hopefully this can assist people at home with their uh, maintenance with their stuff. You don't have to have a ball spinner to you know clean and maintain your equipment. Um, I'll go over a little bit of how to do it without a ball spinner, but then if you also have one or looking to get in one, um, I can pin where I got mine down in the description or the comments, and I'll also let you know how to do it uh, you know, by hand. Uh, so without further ado, uh, the two balls that we'll be doing today is gonna be the new Perfect Mindset from Brunswick, uh, which comes out at a, a 3000 like sanded uh, kind of dull, uh, which surprised me. So that's gonna be our dull example for today. And on the other side, we're gonna do the new Ethos Sim Pearl. Came with a little, well, with a good shine on a good little gloss. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna definitely we're gonna do them the exact same as they come out of the box. So we're just gonna do it to where we can replicate it when we need to clean it. Um, rule of thumb or a good tip to have when you're getting new equipment. Um, a little bit more with stuff that has polish or compound than those that are just dull. But when you get new equipment, um, if it comes with some type of shine, some type of compound polish, try to resurface it before you throw it. So that way you can replicate the look. Um, when you throw something that has a shine or a compound on it and you don't clean it beforehand, when you when it does get dirty and you try to re-clean it again, the look will never be the same. Uh, just because the box says 1500 compound, uh, it's not gonna be as accurate as if you clean it with 15 compounds. So just a rule of thumb. Same thing with a dull bowling ball, it's just a little bit easier to get that look back because there's nothing separating the cover from actually touching the lane. But just try to get into the habit of doing it you know, beforehand. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. What's the deal, for? Forbes. All right, so like you guys just saw, um, all you really need is whatever pads, um, you know, that you're gonna be using uh, to actually resurface or clean your bowling ball. This ball comes out uh, at a factory, 515, 3000. So that's the only pads that you have, I have here, five, 15 and 3000. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat the same steps with each pad and just kind of layer them. Um, and I get into that and the reason why a wet towel, microfiber, rag, whatever. Um, and then you'll just have another dry towel um, to help wipe off any excess, uh, excess um, spray or anything of that nature. Uh, today, what we're gonna be using uh, just to clean this is gonna be some Life After Death. And that'll just help uh, extend the ball's life and just you know help us get into the cover of the ball. Um, you can use whatever cleaning products you like. Doesn't really matter. Um, some people think some products do or affect the ball a certain way. It's all up to you. It's all personal preference at the end of the day. All right, so to actually get into how I like to clean my equipment, um, I always take my barcode and I have my barcode on the top of the ball. Um, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do four sides. So it's gonna be barcode up. Then we're gonna flip it, barcode down. And then we're gonna take our barcode and we're gonna lay it on the side. And then we'll just flip it around and barcode on the other side. All right, so what we're gonna do first, we're just gonna take the 500 pad, we're gonna go in steps five, 15, 3000. Um, and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna do five, five uh, runs on each side, okay? So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five. I'm not pushing down too hard or anything like that. Uh, just moderate pressure, you know, whatever. All right, uh, we're just going to spray about three, four times with the the you know ball cleaner extender. Just kind of sit on the ball. All right, let that sit for a second. I always like to take my pad and kind of rub it in. Just personal personal preference. 
doesn't really change anything. But like I said, everything with how you clean your equipment is personal preference. Uh, once it's rubbed in, uh, we just go for our five times, all right? All right, as you can see, the ball has the residue on it. You take that wet microfiber, go over it once or twice, get that excess off. Take your dry towel. Boom. And that's all it takes. All right, and the only reason why I have that white, the, the wet microfiber towel and the dry one, your bowling balls essentially treat them just like how you would do your skin. Um, if you have too much product, um, it can dry it out or start to clog the pores and everything. So even though I'm spraying it on and I'm scrubbing it in, take something to help take all the excess, whatever may not be necessary, whatever dirt grime is lifting back off and then just dry it off properly. Like I said, just preference. Everybody doesn't have to do it. Everybody may not do it but that's just how I clean mine. Once again, spray a couple times, rub it in. Same with the same 500 pad. And we're gonna do this on this side and the two others and then we'll move on. Again, once I'm done, take my wet one, take all that excess dirt and stuff off, take my dry one, dry it back down. All right, so same situation. We've done the top half, second half. Going by this barcode, okay? So now that we've done top and bottom, we can go on our side, like so, where you have the barcode and the symbol laying down. Same situation. Spray a couple times. Take your same pad, rub it in. All right. And then we just have one more side. So we just take this and literally flip it over. All right. That's the last side. essentially how you resurface a bowling ball now of course there's different steps uh, that was just our first step at 500 so now we're done with this pad but that's gonna be the the scheme and the the routine of how we do each pad all right so the next one up is gonna be the 15 uh, this time I'm gonna do it without the spray um, no necessary reason why I just don't want to keep putting so much spray on it so instead of just using a spray I'm just gonna use regular water just a little bit just to help keep everything uh, lubricated and uh, that way it has a finer cut into the ball just preference all right um, I'm gonna kind of fast forward this side I mean this one because it's the same procedure same pattern but I just want you guys to see me go through the whole thing as you can see the ball is gonna keep that uh, that dull kind of ashy look let me see if I can zoom in for you if you can see it or not. Yeah, so it's gonna keep that, that dullness, real tackiness. Um, and that's what you're kind of looking for when the ball is dull and you're trying to keep it like that, all right? So we're just gonna keep going. Um, and with this next pad, we're just gonna uh, probably get the mute, just put some music over it so you can just see the routine. Now, if you're asking, uh, you know, why I keep using the whole bunch of pads, why not just go straight to 3000? Um, essentially, the simplest and quickest way I can put it, each pad has a certain grit, and grit is uh, based on the roughness. So the lower the number, the more aggressive it'll be, and the higher the number, the more fine um, and slick it'll at least have it. Uh, so with 5000, uh, it's essentially put it in terms of like a mountain peak. The lower the number, the sharper the tooth, or the top, the sharper the top of the mountain. And the higher you go up, five, a thousand, fifteen, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, and it just starts to round over, and it gets more fine. Uh, the lower the number as well, so five thousand, a thousand, fifteen is more based on traction. So the, uh, how aggressive and how early early as far as when you put it down how soon it wants to hook those are the numbers you go for when you're wanting traction when you hit like 2,000 3,000 uh, you're looking for more so of continuation um, and 3,000 4,000 5,000 is when you're looking for more of a slingshot hockey stick give you more length so just a you know just a little tidbit so we're, for 3,000 this is how we're gonna finish off um, this is gonna take all those high mountain tops and kind of shave them down just a little bit but because it still has the underbite with the thousand 
I mean the 15 and the five, uh, 500, it'll still be aggressive, okay? So the 3000 essentially right now is just to help with giving a little bit of length and storing some of the energy. So me personally, I know we've used uh, just regular water and life after death, which is a ball cleaner and a life extender. Really good product if you're looking for something. Um, I just like to always finish off my bowling balls uh, with wow factor uh, made by CTD. It's really just something to help put any performance that you may have taken out the ball while you were cleaning back in. Um, once again, one of those just um, more so just one of those preference type of things. Uh, so I like to always finish off my bowling balls with it, whether it's being me wipe it down or I add it as far as something that helps scrub into the ball. May not make anything different. It may, but like I said, just a preference. So same thing still going to happen. Um, I'm going to use this the same way I use the life of the death spray a little bit and well, then we'll go five on each side and then we'll be done with the bowling ball all right so we got done with the mindset adore bowling ball i know the vibe comes out with a little bit of shine on it i've thrown mine a little bit as you can see it's filthy um and this is going to be me showing you guys how to clean a bowling ball without a ball spinner essentially it's really the exact same process all you're going to need um even without a butt rag get a dry one and whatever you know pad that you're trying to do it so let's just say with this one we're just gonna go 15 and 3000 you know we'll just ballpark something same thing uh you know just go to your sink um or some type of water or i mean you can even do it dry as well just your preference right um you know just rinse it out really quick and same situation you just take whatever product you're using um and of course you don't have to go you know by the four corners because you you know you have to rotate it by yourself but let's just say you have it on a ball cup and let's just say you do start with bar, uh, barcode up right same situation you just spray your cleaner around the ball a little bit while it's in your ball cup and what you'll do is you'll try to clean that side or this upper half of the bowling ball that is not being that's not sitting in the ball cup right so if this is the ball cup i'm just going to take my pad and instead of the ball moving i'm going to move the pad around i'm not going to press too hard um, just moderate and just keep moving and try to cover this whole upper half right get the top and then go back around the sides and really, once you just see or feel as if you've gotten an accurate clean around the ball and gotten the little scuff marks that you see out the way, all right, it's all preference. You'll see the dirt kind of getting up on it, and you'll see like it has like this hazy, hazy look on it. This is where your wet microfiber comes back in, which is where I was saying taking the dirt extra chemical off, and then you just go around the ball wipe all that extra stuff off while it's sitting in your ball cup or just on the table and then you take your, your dry towel and then you knock it all back off all right and then as you as you'll see you probably can't see it too well in the camera let me see oh the sun's coming through now it kind of has like that tackiness again it's kind of dull kind of ashy um you know you can hear it all right and now you see the difference between right here and the bottom half. This has been touched, this hasn't. Same situation. So then you'll end up just flipping it. And it's a little easier without a ball spinner as far as time, because you don't have to worry about going the full four corners because you're touching it as you go around the ball. Same thing once again, spray a little bit of your product. And this is why I think life after death is so well. As you can see, this ball was filthy. Spray a little bit of that, let it sit in, rub it around for a little bit. And it just starts to dig into all that residue. Take your pad once again, moderate pressure. You know, you just go around the ball, go after all the little marks that you see. And if you can't get them all out, um, you know, then just apply a little bit more pressure. Um, and after time, it should start to come out. You just keep going around the ball. So just like this little mark right here, I just dig into it just a little bit more. And if I need to at any time, spray some more. Cause the cleaner does help it, you know, loosen up all the dirt and stuff. Go back around. Yep, yeah, see, spray a little bit more cleaner. Yeah, a little bit more attention to the little marks. It's starting to come up a little bit better. You 
get all that belt mark and all the rubber from the lanes and the gutters, the pin deck off. And with some, you have to work a little bit more than other bowling balls, but that's just, you know, taking your time and learning your technique for yourself. But either way, this is better than what it did look like. So like I said, once again, once you're done, it'll have like that hazy, kind of grimy look. Take your wet one, go around it. And I understand there's still some marks on there. I just didn't want to take too much time. Take your dry one, boom, wipe it off, All right? And once again, same thing. It looks better than it did. I'm rushing, so it's not the best, but it still is better. Still would perform a lot better than it just did. Still gives you that tackiness. And that's essentially how you do it. Now, of course, if you feel like you missed a spot, then you could also, you know, always readjust your bowling ball, hit that spot up, get your little marks off a little bit better. Um, but it all comes down to preference. And you would essentially just repeat the same thing for your 3000 pad. Um, you know, get your cleaner, lubricate the ball, lubricate the pad a little bit, go around, scrub, 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 highlight whatever marks that you may want to recently, uh, mainly get out. Wet towel, dry towel, same situation. And then if you would like to, and you always want to, you know, finish off your bowling ball with like a performance enhancer or put back in whatever you may have taken off, definitely a great thing that you could use the wow factor. Or if you can get your hands on a so fresh, so clean, it's essentially about the same thing. Um, and it's also a ball life extender. So definitely great products, okay? Um, so that's how you do it without a ball spinner. Same results as the Perfect Mindset. They both have that dull, tacky sound. Uh, both gonna have some good traction on the lanes. And that's really all you're looking for when that's what, if that's what you're trying to get out your equipment, 500, 1,000, 15, 2,000, definitely the way to go. Um, and you don't always have to use water. You could do it dry um, and just dry sand, but that's just up to, you know, how you like to do it. Don't be too worried about getting scratches in the ball. Um, sometimes it's just gonna happen when you do it by hand because you can't get a accurate and fine cut. But at the same time, don't try to use too much pressure. Just, you know, moderate, go around, keep the ball moving. And that should eliminate and keep down the amount of scratches that you have in your equipment. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get into surfacing or resurfacing or cleaning or maintenancing, whatever word you would like to use. A ball that comes out of box, compound, polished, you know, sheen, whatever you wanna call it, gloss. This is how I particularly like to clean them. Um, same thing with the perfect mindset. Uh, what I do is, these are not drilled, these are just brand new bowling balls that I'm just trying to go ahead and get ready for being drilled. Um, I like to just do them the exact same way they came out of box or I may alter them a little bit. With the perfect mindset, I kept it exact since it was dull. I'm a little easier to adjust the surface if I need to. With this being, um, you know, with some gloss or factory, crown factory compound on it, um, I'm probably gonna take it just a little step below just to make sure um, it gives me a look I'm really looking for. And by the way, if you're ever trying to find out what your ball came out of box, if you keep your box, right? Let me get the get this right. If you look on the box of yours, it'll say it down here at the bottom, ball finish, crown factory compound. Um, normally they do have the numbers as well. If it does not have it, then by all means, just search your bowling ball up. Um, you can go on bowlersmarkbowling.com or go to the company website. And if you go to the ball, it'll show you. Let me see if you can get a better look where it says finish, and it has the 500,015 Sire Crown Factory Compound. That's exactly what the pads are. Um, Sire is a type of uh, sanding pad, all right? And Crown Factory Compound is just the sheen gloss you're seeing. The difference with compound and polish is polish is gonna give you more length, where compound is gonna have some type of grit in it, so it will still give you that length, but not as long. Um, somebody like me, I've always kind of been more on the faster side of bowling. And uh, every time I used polish, I just kind of was throwing it past the break point. It wasn't picking up fast enough. Um, it was just sliding too long. Um, so I saw with compound that it was still giving me that length, but it still was reacting. Um, so I just stick with it. But once again, a preference thing. So with this ball, same situation. We're going to get our pads. Um, we have our five. Uh, we have our 15, and then we're gonna have to get a thousand. I'm gonna just go ahead and do it exactly out of box. 
just for the sake of the video and if I need to change it um, we'll have a video about you know changing services and how to adjust to what you see to what you want so these are three pads once again five a, th uh, a thousand fifteen um, same situation, I'm going to do it off camera this time, but I'm just going to go, I'm going to rinse these off since I just used them with the residue on the back. So I'm going to just lightly rinse them, squeeze them out, and this is a brand new one. So I'm going to just wet this up a little bit too, loosen it up. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to rinse out my wet microfiber, microfiber. <laughs> and then um, also the new things that I'm going to use is a, uh, this is the polishing pad. I guess it's also from CTD. It has like a scrubber on the back for like a rubber or residue. I don't really use that because I sand my stuff, but I do like this side. I can put my hand on the inside, put my compound, I get to spread it. it gives me a better traction on the ball. So if you're in the uh, market looking for a good polishing pad or you don't want to use a microfiber tile or just, you know, whatever, if you just like the way this looks in my video, uh, I also have it pinned down below just so that you can go see it. Um, I'm gonna go rinse this off as well. The only reason it looks hard and dry right now is because I used it not too long ago with some compound. So I just help, uh, it just helps refresh the pad. Um, and then it also still leaves compound residue in the pad. So I don't have to use as much compound. But once again, all preference, you know, you do as pleased. So I'm gonna just go uh, freshen these up. And then also, also this right here, hanging. This is just a regular like car chamois. Um, that you usually drive the car with. Um, I like to use this to help kind of buff the ball. So once I put the compound on and I scrub it in a little bit, I take this and I help seep it back out, any excess just to help buff it. Um, that way I don't have to clog the pores up on the bowling ball too much. But you'll see the difference when I'm, uh, you know, applying it, how it can go from a dull kind of sandy look to a little bit more of a glossy finish like it is right now. So let me go wet these up. Um, you don't have to necessarily use this. This is a trick that one of my OGs taught me. Um, it's been giving me good results ever since, so I just stuck with it. All right, I'm gonna do this, I'll be right back. All right, so we just got back finishing, uh, washing everything off. This is the chamois I was telling you about. Now it's all flimsy and ready to, you know, help buff out. So that's an intricate piece for me. Doesn't have to be for you. Once again, rewash these out a little bit. Got my thousand, my uh, 15 and my five. Um, so they're ready to go. Got my wet microfiber, got all the extra dust and dirt that I got off the other two, I mean the Perfect Mindset and the Vibe off. And then my uh, my little polisher that you see. Don't worry about it looking like this, it's just the compound and wear and tear, all right, you know what I'm saying? Um, I put it in the washing machine and all that, I clean it, all right? So it's gonna be the same process. Um, barcode up, we're gonna do four sides, barcode up, bar so down, side, flip on the other side. Um, we're gonna do that five uh, we're gonna do it with all one all three of the pads starting with the five um the thousand and the 15. Uh, i'm not going to use the scrubbing gel because the ball's not dirty so it's not going to take extra work i'm just trying to rebuild the surface back up to be repeatable okay so we're just going to take our five um and starting off we're just going to do life after death for the five um we're, we're going to do water for the thousand and then we're going to do the hook monster once again for the 15 just a regular you know routine things um and then we'll get into the compound application afterwards so um i'll speed all this up or i might just show you the first swing of each side or each pad and then we'll get to the actual compound all right all right so as you can see it's not as shiny now let me bring it in give you a better look it's not as shiny it's this is what we would call dull um where it kind of just has like that ashy just real tarry look um, and that's how you can tell that it has more surface, more traction. Um, so if you ever hear somebody talk about, oh, I need more surface on my bowling ball or more surface, this, 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 and a third, this is what they're talking about. Um, the more ashy, dull, dry it looks, that's just a, a clear indication that it has surface on it, okay? Just wanna point that out. And if you can see the difference, gloss, dry. All right, so we're taking it from this, this glossy side with the reflection, to the dull side and then we're gonna work it right back up to having this. It's just that this side and how it comes out of the box is not repeatable. Um, they use different type of sanding pads. They, they use high tech machinery and I don't care who you are, what you have at your house, ball spinner, no ball spinner. You'll never be able to repeat that, I promise. All right, and as you can see now, 
We have a few slits of like polish in there just because we have to do our other two corners, but it's nowhere near as glossy now. A lot more dull, a lot more surface. Um, so just want to show you, it does make a big difference. And this ball like this, rather than with gloss, this won't go as long. Um, this will pick up a little sooner. Pick up as far as wants to hook a little sooner. Um, so when you hear words like early, strong, pick up, that's just referring to when you let the ball go, how soon does it want to go left? When you hear weak, clean, long, or length, that's just essentially exactly how it sounds. The ball wants to go further down um, before it hooks. Um, it conserves the energy. So strong is it uses energy really fast. Uh, weak or long is it stores it up and is more of a slingshot. You know what I'm saying? So smooth banana, slingshot, or hockey stick. You know, I go by those two words, all right? So we're just gonna fast forward this. I'll show you pretty much what it's gonna look like. Uh, now we're just gonna go the 1,000 and the 15. Um, I'm gonna fast forward that part. And then next time after this, I'm gonna just go ahead and start the compound, all right? Cool. All right, so I'll finish with the ethos. Uh, as you can see, still dull, kind of ashy, tacky. Just went through our five, 1,015. Um, and now we're getting ready to apply our compound. Uh, I'm more of a compound type of guy, like I said. Polish is a little too long for myself for my preference on what I would like to see. Um, I use Crown Factory Compound. This is exactly the same product that they use at the Brunswick facilities. So um, I just kind of took a liking to it. So I just kind of stick with it. The key with this stuff right here is um, don't be too heavy handed with it. I made that mistake a lot. Um, applying too much, um, it ends up kind of clogging the pores, especially if you don't get it out. Um, so it essentially will make your ball just kind of never hook. So less is kind of more, it spreads really easy. And as you'll see, um, if you have it, I'll try to zoom in once I put it on the ball. Maybe you'll see it, maybe you won't. Um, it kind of has like grit in it. So it'll look like it's kind of like gritty, sandy type. Um, but that's the whole point of compound, all right? So all I do is I start at the same top again, um, barcode up, barcode down, side to side. And um, I decrease the amount every time because it's just adding on and the compound <clears throat> stays in the pad okay so you can either put it on the pad each time or you can put on the bowling ball um just for right now i'm gonna put on the bowling ball so i'll just put on the top just a little bit less is more um you don't want to put too much it'll clog it okay so yeah about like a quarter quarter size or whatever and you know that's all up to yourself if you want to use more use less up to you all i do is i just take it and I try to spread it across the ball evenly on that top part, scrub it in. And then with this, I use a little bit more pressure. I'm gonna go up and down four times, and then I'm gonna use this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a corner of my chamois, and I'm gonna just go up and down until I see that I've taken all the compound off evenly, and it gives me that glare that I'm looking for, okay? A little bit more extra pressure. Not to where it stops the ball from spinning, but to where I can actually make sure it gets into the cover like I want it to. That's two. That's three. All right, last one. All right. Take my little chamois, grab a little corner. Be careful, it can kind of whip if it catches too wrong. I just start to start from the bottom or the top. Go up to the top. Try to apply as much pressure as you can. Go back down. I just do this multiple, multitude of times until I make sure and I feel like I've gotten all the extra product out. Um, you can do this with a microfiber towel as well. I just choose to use this just because I know how well it is at taking product back up like it does on cars. All right. And the ball's gonna start heating up. The ball heat, uh, the heat in the bowling ball cover just uh, assists with everything seeping into the cover properly. All right, we'll do one more good sweep. All right, and then I take a different, a cleaner microfiber towel. I just go over the top of it, wipe it down, get any extra, uh, excess chemical or product off. There you go. So it's not gonna be super shiny like it was before, but it still has a better, oh man, look at the sun, man, playing around. 
All right, so as you can see, it's gonna have a definitely more of that shine look like it did before prior. Um, it's not gonna be super, super shiny, which is okay. It gives you the same effect. So as you can see, shiny, and this is where we just applied the compound and everything, and on the back side, still dull, nothing on it, okay? So that's the biggest difference. So now we're putting it back to what the box says, so that way it can, if it gets dirty like this, then we know exactly how to clean it. Moving forward, okay? Same situation. Like I said, not too much compound. Um, put a little bit on the top, about like a dime or a quarter. Rub it in, uh, a little bit more heavy pressure. Don't stop, the, don't put too much pressure to where it stops the ball from spinning. About four times, take your time with it. Make sure it gets into the cover. You take your chamois, your extra towel, whatever you want, paper towel, however you want to get it. You know, just make sure you get all the excess, pull as much out the pores as you can. Um, and then take a clean towel, rub over the top to make sure that you're good, okay? All right. All right. And let me see if I can fix this lighting real quick. All right. And as you can see, the ball looks as close as it will out of box like it did. Still gives you that all around shine. Still taggy. Still shiny. Looks like it just did out of the box. Now, one thing that I like to do as well, um, even when they're drilled and I'm just recleaning and stuff like that, I take this same Wow Factor or uh, So Fresh So Clean. They're about the same type of product. I like them just the same. Um, when I'm done compounding something and I put shine back on, just as like a safety uh, measure, um, just to put performance if I did take any out um, because I added a product such as compound or something like that with some shine, I like to spray this down as if I was about to sand it. And I take that same towel that I was kind of wiping the excess off with, I rub it in and I just let it spin just a few times. Just a preference thing, just a preference thing, um, just to make sure I get all extra product off and put some of that performance back into the ball. And I just usually do this in, you know, two halves, so barcode up, barcode down, and then I'm usually pretty much good to go. And we're all good. It doesn't take away any of the tackiness. It doesn't take away the shine of anything. It makes it a little bit more tacky. And I just lift it up, make sure I didn't get any, I missed any spots. Do a rub around, and then there you have it. That's how I recompound, repolish. Man, this sun, boy, I tell you. That's how I get my balls clean, keep them maintained, stuff like that. Super simple, super easy. It doesn't take a lot of products. All right, so we finished up today with our uh, kind of tutorial on how to clean equipment. Once again, this is our dual subject. You hear that tackiness, no no shine on it. Um, 3,000 finish, or excuse me, 5, 15, 3,000. Stole, real tacky, squeaky. That's what we're looking for. And then on the Ethos, it came out with Crown Factory Polish, 500, 1,015 with some shine. As you can see, still has that glare that you're seeing from the sun right now. Still tacky. Um, and this is just good practice to do for when you're getting new bowling balls. Um, it just helps be able to know what the ball is going to do, keep that motion going throughout time. Thank y'all for checking in with me. Just bowl.